By 1943, Nazi German SS soldiers had murdered nearly 2,700,000 Jews in the killing centers, either by asphyxiation with poisonous gas or by shooting them. The Nazis had annexed Austria, Czechoslovakia, Western Poland, the Netherlands, Belgium, Luxembourg, France, Denmark, Yugoslavia, Greece, and Norway. The Nazi soldiers entered territories in the wake of the fear that preceded them because of news of their horrifying treatment of the people in the territories they had already conquered. Colonel Klaus von Stauffenberg was born an aristocrat in Jenningen, Germany on November 15, 1907. Family history dictated that he joined the army, which he did at the age of 19. He received his commission four years later. Men on both sides of his family, as far back as they could be traced, were in the military. Despite Stauffenberg's role as an army officer under the command of Hitler, he was not a supporter of Hitler. Stauffenberg had supported the Nazis very early on, but his experience in the war had turned him against them. In Poland in 1939, he had witnessed SS soldiers killing Jewish women and children by the roadside. While fighting in France in 1940, he had seen a Nazi field commander order the execution of unarmed British prisoners. After one disastrous battle, Stauffenberg had asked a close friend, is there no officer in Hitler's headquarters capable of taking a pistol to the beast? In his journal, Stauffenberg's dismay and disillusionment were evident, he wrote, Wie versprechen des Führers von Frieden und Wohlstand sind verfälscht worden und haben nichts als Verwüstung hinterlassen. Die von Hitlers SS verübten Gräueltaten sind eine Schande für die Ehre der deutschen Wehrmacht. Im Offizierskorps herrscht weit verbreitete Abschuss. Über die Verbrechen, die von den Nazis begangen werden. Die Ermordung von Zivilisten. Die Folter und das Verhungerlassen der Menschen. The mass execution of Jews. My duty as an officer is no longer to save my country, but to save human lives. I cannot find one general in a position to confront Hitler with the courage to do it. Colonel Stauffenberg, sir. It was Colonel Klaus von Stauffenberg's right and therefore his privilege as a German Nazi to follow Hitler's orders and do nothing against Hitler. But he felt he had a higher responsibility as a German citizen and moral human being to stop Hitler and the actions of the Nazis. Stauffenberg's disgust for Hitler skyrocketed when he saw the way the SS treated Polish prisoners of war in 1939. This, coupled with the murder of the Jews, helped him decide to do everything possible to end Hitler's reign. Stauffenberg was able to put aside scruples about treason and the breaking of solemn oaths, knowing that he had a greater responsibility to stop the Nazis. Once Stauffenberg decided that Hitler must be assassinated, he became fanatical about it. On April 7, 1943, Stauffenberg was seriously injured while fighting in Africa. Stauffenberg lost his left eye, two fingers on his left hand, and his entire right hand after surgery. When he was released from the hospital, he was reassigned as an army administrator. By September, he was working in Berlin under the command of General Friedrich Obreit, who recruited him to join a secret resistance movement within the Nazi party. After having personally witnessed some of the atrocities carried out by Hitler's Nazis, Stauffenberg was eager to join with others who shared his views. He and high-ranked officers in the German army set their minds to kill Adolf Hitler. Finally, Stauffenberg had found some like-minded individuals who knew that they must at least attempt to assassinate Hitler, whatever the cost. Together, it was decided the group had to take action even if they failed. Stauffenberg's post in the army gave him occasional close access to Hitler. Therefore, he was chosen to carry out an assassination attempt. On July 20, 1944, Stauffenberg went to the Wolf's Lair one of Hitler's key military headquarters during the war, located in the Marisian woods in northeastern Poland. Hitler would be attending a meeting there, and the German resistance saw an opportunity to strike, so they took it. This meeting would put Stauffenberg in the same room with Hitler himself. It was decided that explosives would be used to kill Hitler. Stauffenberg was armed with two plastic explosives inside of his briefcase, which he was then supposed to set down under the table where Hitler sat. Stauffenberg would then be called out of the room where he could safely await the explosion. In less than a fortnight, and we run the risk of losing all the ground we have managed to gain in the last... It will be a catastrophe. All seemed to go as planned. 
The briefcase exploded and Stoffenberg assumed the plan had worked. He then fled back to Berlin. Once back in Berlin, he joined his fellow plotters at Vanderblok. With Hitler assumed to be dead, they would mobilize Operation Valkyrie and have the reserve army take charge and arrest all of the Nazis. Unfortunately, the plan did not go as expected. While the bomb did indeed go off, killing four other people who were in the room at the time, it failed to kill Hitler himself. Stauffenberg's involvement in the plot to assassinate Hitler was obvious since he had fled the scene and prematurely reported Hitler's death to the public. The Nazis very quickly reassumed power. Stauffenberg. The orders of the Fuhrer are under arrest. On July 21st, 1944, at 12.30 a.m., Stauffenberg was executed by a firing squad. It was later reported that Stauffenberg died shouting, hey. Stauffenberg was officially executed by the Nazis for high treason against Germany. Almost 40 years later, Colonel Klaus von Stauffenberg's choice to take personal responsibility of stopping the horrors being committed by the misled German army was publicly honored. In 1980, a Berlin road known as the Bender Truss was renamed as the Stauffenberg Truss, and a memorial was erected in the Bender Block. The offices where Stauffenberg worked and was arrested. The German government also placed a memorial in the courtyard where he was executed. Stauffenberg was a true hero who took action in opposition to the majority of his peers who surrounded him in the interest of a higher moral and ethical goal. Rarely has history presented a figure who so profoundly realized his greater human responsibility and who so boldly worked to try to end an intolerable evil.